for a few more to participants. Ah, here through. they all are. Yeah. Looks like it's going to be a full house today, yes? Yeah. Yes, I think That's it will. Really good. Really good. So everyone, welcome. We have a bit of a special webinar today because normally we have a guest presenter, but today it's just... Well, not just Danielle, but Danielle presenting um, all about dashboards for us today. So it's going to be a jam-packed, jam-packed um, webinar because I know what you've been putting together over the past uh, past couple of weeks to get this yeah. up and running. So yeah, this is so exciting. It is exciting, and look, we're almost at capacity now. So this is great news. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Danielle, like everybody, feel free to use the chat and say hi to everybody. Uh, make sure you change over to all panellists and attendees. Tell us where you're located. We love seeing that, especially all over the world, don't we, Danielle? We yes. We'd love to see where everybody is. Especially being that we are unable to travel at the moment. I know. Oh, my goodness. We've got people from Brisbane, Melbourne, Ecuador. Ecuador, Auckland, Saudi Arabia, Azerbaijan. Uh, wow, everywhere. Johannesburg, all over. Fantastic. Yeah, wow. Yeah, Canada. Indonesia. Nepal. 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 Wow. wow. Fantastic. All, all right. right. We've got some good time zones here for, uh, I'm sure it's very early in the morning or late at night for some people. As well. Yeah, yeah. So, do you want to explain how to, every, to everybody how this works and we'll get started? Sure can. So if everybody, like you're welcome to post questions in the chat, but the better way to post questions is to uh, go over to the Q&A and post your questions because we'll actually be able to see those and we'll be able to answer those as we go. Uh, we are also, we are now at capacity. So we're also live on YouTube as well. So I am keeping an eye on YouTube. So if you do have any questions, you're welcome to post the questions there too. Uh, and of course, Danielle's going to jump straight in. And yes, you should be able to see my screen. Can you see my uh, my PowerPoints? Okay, let's get started. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, I have been um, ever since uh, this whole sort of COVID thing started, and we are not able to travel. Um, I uh, went into overdrive, and over the last eight weeks, we have run fifteen online events. So that's yeah, a lot. Uh, we've had thousands and thousands of registrations from all over the world. Um, just to give you a few uh, numbers, this is where the stats are at the moment. And so today, uh, I am your speaker. So um, this is me. I'm a financial modelling specialist. So Excel is my world. It's what I live and breathe. It's pretty much all I've ever done is working with Excel and particularly dashboards I find absolutely fascinating. So make no mistake, today is going to be a jam-packed, action-filled, uh, content-filled webinar, but I am here to sell you a course because I've got a brand new live webinar-style training course coming up uh, in June. Now, it's not going to be a hard sell. Uh, we do have a bit of an offer for you at the end. Susan's going to pop the link to the course in the chat now, so if you want to check it out, you can. Uh, other than that, I will not go on about it. Um, this is, uh, if you're interested, you can check it out, and if you like, the way that I'm running today is going to be similar to the way we're going to run those sessions. So they are going to be three hours at a time basically. So um, the reason that I'm so interested in, um, in dashboards and data is just that um, as a financial modeler or somebody who's working in finance, I find that we are always looking at numbers. Um, I love numbers. Uh, you know, we very much, when you're building a financial model, you're spending, you know, all your time looking at numbers and, and numbers are, I mean, I think numbers are absolutely fascinating, but not everybody thinks so. And numbers can be, you know, perhaps just a little bit boring. And I think it's really important to be able to present the output of your work. You know, you've slaved away and created this amazing piece of analysis or a financial model or something like that. And uh, you're very, very proud of it. But if you present it just in black and white on a spreadsheet with grid lines, nobody is going to pay much attention to, uh, to your hard work. So I think it's really important to just take a little bit of time and uh, 
to make your uh, visualizations look attractive and in a way that they can, uh, can can be appealing and that people are actually going to pay attention to them. Uh, the other reason I find this really interesting is, um, you know, the the fact that we're living in a in in the age of big data and also in an age of automation. You know, this idea that uh, that everything is becoming more and more automated and uh, particularly um, uh, with the, in analysis, you know, a lot of the things that we're doing, uh, uh, we're, we're harnessing the power or the, the, the power of modern Excel. Um, and I'd like to sort of run a, a bit of a poll. Um, I, uh, my courses are always very, uh, very interactive. And I'd like to know how, uh, how, how worried you are about your role being automated. So, uh, you know, you, do you think that robots are coming for your job? Or do you think that, uh, you know, maybe we've got, we've got more important things to worry about right now? Um, you know, maybe just a little bit or, or definitely, you know, you think that perhaps uh, you, you're really worried by automation and you should, I mean, in my opinion, I think you probably should be a little bit worried about it. But I think that by uh, making sure that you remain relevant to harness the power of modern Excel or the, or, or not only Excel, but the tools that we have readily available. And in my opinion, Excel is probably one of the tools that's the most easy to sort of get your hands on um, to really stay relevant. So I'm going to stop the polling now, hopefully that's given you a chance. Um, wow. So I can see most people have answered the poll, which is great. So I'm going to, yeah, interesting, interesting results. I'm going to just share those results with you. So you should be able to see um, the results. So yeah, most people are saying maybe a bit. Yeah, yeah. But otherwise, pretty much, pretty much uh, spread across. So interesting. I'm going to just jo uh, stop there for a sec. So Susan, is there any, any, any questions or any comments before we, um, before I launch in? Um, I can see um, you've popped the link in there. I'm just going to check the Q&A. Yep. Okay. We're all good. So if you have any um, comments, um, I probably don't see the chat so much. So Susan will, will handle that. But if you have any particular questions that you really want me to cover, make sure you pop those into the Q&A. Okay. So let's keep going. So this is really what I'd like to cover with you today. So there's really four things that I'd like to talk about. Um, firstly, I'll sort of define the idea of a dashboard or why dashboards are so popular. We'll then talk about some of the dashboard tools. We'll go into some principles of dashboard design and then uh, looking at the correct method of visual display. And uh, we'll look at some sort of um, lots and lots of examples of visualization. Um, it's really just a uh, a snapshot of the kind of things that we do on the live training course. And I'm also going to jump into Excel uh, and Power BI as well, just to give you a bit of an idea of the kind of things that you can do. So first of all, um, let's talk about why dashboards are so popular. So we are, we're living in the world of big data, lots and lots and lots of data that's available to us all the time. Something like 90% of the world's data has been created in the last two years, uh, but it is uh, it is just information. It's just data, and our job is to take that data and to turn it into understanding and to to turn it into into knowledge and wisdom, and so that you can actually make decisions basically from it. And you, you know, this is the world that we're living in. Uh, I think that social media has a lot to answer for in terms of how we work in our everyday lives. In the old days, you know when I first started out as a financial modeler, I'd be really proud of the output and I would send uh, my analysis or my report to somebody and they'd be paying full attention to it. And nowadays, I think that we are so distracted by so many different things pinging up and you know, all over the place. And that's what we really have to combat. And so uh, we are very much living in a, in a visual world. So um, if you try posting something on social media without any, uh, any images, uh, you don't get as much attention. And for that, and that's the other reason why I think it's important to use charts and visuals to get people's attention uh, when you're putting together uh, your output and remembering that there's so much information but also that people are consuming information in lots of different ways as well so they're not just uh, you know looking at 
hard copies or or you know in the office on the screen they might be looking at a tablet or in a phone or or consuming things in lots of different ways so we have to remember that when we put together reports and dashboards for other people to read uh, I find this this is kind of an interesting study that came out and it's I'm, I'm not too sure about the accuracy of it um, but basically a, a study came out that said that the human attention span has fallen to uh, one that is less than a goldfish apparently uh, I don't know so when the smartphones came out in 2010 um, our attention span was 12 seconds and it's now it's it, uh, then decreased to uh, eight seconds which is less than that of a goldfish but it would be a lot easier I think if I were to perhaps show it visually so when I was uh, reading through it you had to it sort of uses the reading part of your brain so if I were to actually show it to you visually you do kind of get that message across a lot more more quickly uh, so for example here where I say um, you know 12 seconds you can see it visually uh, in the year 2000 and then that dropped to eight seconds and then I can show you there that the goldfish is nine seconds so that kind of that's the kind of imagery perhaps that um, you could get your message across um, in perhaps a, a quicker and easier way and while I'm on the subject of goldfish uh, this one is kind of a an interesting one uh, I have a, another poll for you so uh, here we go so I would like to know what you think this chart is telling us. <laughs> this is one of the charts that actually came out when uh, Power BI was uh, one of, fairly early on. Uh, it actually won a competition. So people got really, really excited by this. Uh, it's called the aquarium chart on Power BI. <laughs> Tell me what you think of it. Uh, just like with, uh, with Excel, uh, you know, you can do all sorts of amazing things in Excel. It doesn't necessarily mean that you should. Uh, interesting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> some, ah, interesting results here. Okay. I have no idea what this chart is telling us. It's basically, uh, I think the idea is that it should be um, the size of the fish should be giving you the size of perhaps the the customers or the or, or the numbers and the, the the direction of the fish uh, telling you where your customers are going uh, but I really um, think it's quite uh, it's, it's a little bit gimmicky and not telling you uh, <laughs> terribly much okay so uh, that was interesting okay so I'm going to just share the results on that one just to yeah okay so that you should <laughs> most people say it's the biggest customers <laughs> Okay, you should never use a chart like this. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, in certain situations, I think perhaps um, it's it's useful. Uh, but yeah, I don't think it's perhaps the clearest way of displaying what we want to display. So before we continue, I just wanted to jump into the definition of what a dashboard is. But I'm just going to um, stop for a second, see if there's any, any questions. So... Um, no questions. Please. Rhonda just mentioned that without a key on that chart, it really doesn't make any sense. And that is so Good true. Point. Like there's just yeah. there's just yeah. nothing there. Um, <laughs> exactly. Brian, exactly. Brian just asked, when should we use Power View or Power BI? Yeah, Power View I think is um not really used anymore. Um I I don't think it's really part of the package. I think that was an older one. Um, I might have to get back to you on that. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. Um, was there any other any other questions? Uh, Christopher just raised his hand. Christopher, did you have a question that you want to pop in the Q and A at all? Okay. All right. Okay. Well, we might just uh, we might just keep going. I just wanted to talk about the uh, the definition of the dashboard. I mean, the analogy is that you are tearing along the highway at 100 kilometres an hour or maybe more and you haven't got time to fiddle around with Excel formulas. You want to be able to see exactly what's going on at a glance. So it should be easy to read. It should be on a single page. Ideally, it should be real time, not always practical. Usually it should be, you know, relatively uh, frequent updated but it really should show a snapshot of current statuses and historical trends and the idea of a dashboard is that it should enable instantaneous and informed decision 
at a glance so that you can very, very quickly look at it and see what's happening, what's going on. Um, that's really the idea of a dashboard. And that's really why dashboards have become so popular because um, they really just kind of show you what's happening in the organization very quickly. So um, let's talk about some um, financial information now. I know not all dashboards are relating to financial information, but a lot of them are. I know that financial information is often the easiest uh, to get your hands on. And so that's quite often what, you know, what the information is, is that it's uh, very much uh, financial. Um, people often are not very good at at following uh, financial information uh, because uh, people's eyes tend to glaze over. And probably the, one of the worst things that you can do is uh, present financial information in Excel. Uh, I cannot stress this enough. Excel is not a presentation tool. Um, that is definitely not. Um, if you're having to give a, a, a sort of verbal presentation, Excel should not be there unless you're a you know, financial modeler and you're having to actually go through it and your audience are other modelers and finance people, I, I definitely would not use Excel. So you should really try to make things um, easy for people to follow. So for example, if you wanted to show a projected income statement or profit and loss statement, uh, you would not show it like that. Um, showing it like this with the grid lines and everything just makes it really uh, quite, quite boring, uh, really not that interesting. It would be much more more interesting if you were to show perhaps something like this where you can see okay here's my gross revenue and then of that gross revenue you can kind of see it laid out in fact and you certainly shouldn't read out all the numbers I was in a meeting the other day and somebody was actually reading out the numbers to the exact decimal place and it was really uh, distracting and not necessary. In fact, that's probably almost too much information that I have. The, I mean, the idea is really that you you have the number there in case people need the precision, but basically you just want to give them sort of an overview of what's going on here. So you can almost, the way that we've got this laid out with the, this is a waterfall chart or, or a stepped chart, and it's a great way of displaying um, or telling a story about what's going on um, in this particular instance. It's an income statement, and you can see here that that is now their gross income, and then you've got them at the edge of their seats. Maybe, maybe not <laughs> wanting to know what is the next thing. Ah, the staff cost marketing. And then from that uh, leftover is your operating income. And then we have to pay taxes. And then your net income is that tiny little bit left at the bottom. So you can perhaps make it uh, a little bit more interesting than it otherwise would be. So um, as I mentioned, the course is quite quite interactive. I'll take you into some examples in a minute, but this is an example of that. We're not going to do this example now, but um, that's the sort of things like I'll give you a pile of messy data and then we get into breakout groups, which works really well. So we kind of split people up into, depending on the numbers, um, you know, three, four, five people in a group together. And so you break out into groups and you work on it by yourself and then you discuss it with each other. Um, and you're with the same people right the way through. And then I pop into all the different groups and say hi how are you going and um, and then you sort of come up with a, a solution and then we come back together in the main group and then uh, you you know one person will present or we'll be able to sort of uh, get together um, that way so that that works quite well and you know I'll give you sort of lots of lots of hints and you know tips and tricks to, to try and a lot of the instructions and the completed versions are given so I'll give you um, a pack of stuff that you need to either what I would recommend is you either have it on a separate screen so like if you've got an iPad or something by you or if you don't have that it might work better to print everything out so that you can make lots of notes um, as we're going along so that's the sort of stuff that we do um, and then we you know this is an example of what that 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 last example if you hit f11 you know you can create an instant chart that gives you um, a very quick visual of messy data for example so um, this is another example of, you know, what the, the kind of thing that we do. This one is a solo exercise. So I kind of give everybody the, um, uh, the, the data and then the instructions. And then we, uh, you know, I show everybody what to do and then everybody works on it on themselves. And then we kind of work through that together. And then at the end of each day, so that's over th uh, three hour sessions and we do a half hour clinic um, at the end. So people can kind of ask any questions that they have. So how are we going, everybody? I can see somebody's got a raised hand. Is any any questions, Susan? Are everybody okay? 
So um, where is the data? We are not going to work on any data today. Um, I'm going to show you some examples. So this is just a quick one hour overview. It's a preview uh, and I'll show you some examples. So I won't give you any um, um, any any Excel stuff today. I'm just going to kind of take you through um, some examples of how things uh, would work. Danielle, we yes. did get a question from Chandra. Is that dashboard have specific users top management or is it a summary of analysis? Uh, which dashboard or any dashboard in general yeah. oh, it could be anything um, it could be analysis like in a lot of detail or it could be the whole company for you know the entire organization to make decisions or it could just be one tiny department I think it really it just I mean you're the fantastic thing about Excel is that you can build anything basically and um, and yeah that's what yeah that's the decision that you that you make as a as a, as a dashboard builder. So I hope that answers your question there. Uh, here's another example. So like we, uh, we do a bit of brainstorming. So, um, you know, what do you like? What do you like about what, what does everybody love or like about Excel? So just jump on the chat and tell me, um, you know, the kind of things that you, uh, that you like about Excel on the, on the, on the chat. Before you go there, we do have a yeah. couple of questions. Oh, okay. uh, so Christine's asked, is there a quick way to update dashboards when financial data changes on a monthly basis? Oh, yes, yes. Power Query, definitely. <laughs> I'll show you Power Query in a minute, but you can use Power Query to grab some data and pull it into Excel. Yep, or you just, um, on, and then just Alt F5 to refresh, or you just keep pasting. Or the other thing is using tables and pasting new data in yeah, so, and we did have another question. Is the purpose of this webinar to give an overview of the course only or will you address some aspects of dashboard design? And we were talking about this prior and you said yeah. we're definitely yeah. um, going through some dashboard design in this, but we are we covering will. off some. Will. There will be further, you know, obviously this is a one-hour webinar. We're looking at a nine-hour course. There's a lot of different Yeah, things. yeah, and I'm going to pack as much as I possibly can into today. <laughs> so. Wow, we've got lots of people that love Excel. I thought we might. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's quick. One. Mm -hmm. Sorry, one more question. Uh, what yep. are reviews with respect to dashboard? Do we have good demand for the same from client side? Will the client pay us only for dashboard service or will they look for it as an add-on service? So there's a few things in yeah, that one. They could be. Oh, could be either. Um, I might have to get back back to you on come back one, to that but, one um, definitely it is a good it is a good service to offer um, a lot of clients like having dashboards and you could do that as a consultant or an add-on service um, it's something that you provide for your clients for sure um, so people said that it's quick to extract the data they liked using it for forecasting uh, what else do people like about Excel they uh, visual summary da, da, da. Um, Excel is power um, what do, what frustrates you about Excel? So what is what sort of things do you find difficult? Uh, oh yes, everybody loves Excel. What's frustrating about Excel? I'd like to know. Um, I find it frustrating because of the errors. Um, I find that it uh, yeah oh, only good oh, formulas don't work when formulas don't work. Yes. Um, when it uh, runs out of memory, you know, that's that's a real problem. Too big, too big, crashes, okay. Lots of reasons why people find it frustrating. So, okay. So um, let's talk now about the different dashboard tools that are available. So I want to jump in now. And, uh, and sort of look at a comparison of different tools that you could use. Now, if you ask a graphic designer to create um, a dashboard for you, they'll probably come up with uh, something static like Adobe or web-based tools. But if you, I mean, we always want uh, 
the uh, dashboards to be dynamic so that the data is constantly updating. And one of the tools you could try is Tableau or Click View. Um, but I often find that if you find something that you like, so if you go to a web-based tool or find a dashboard that you like, you can actually copy it and create it in Excel. And I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the smallman.com. So Marcus Small's got a fantastic website. So he's got lots and lots of templates that you can download for free and you can just copy them in, um, in Excel. Excel. So you can create, you can do all sorts of amazing things in Excel. But what I'm really going to focus on today and the one that I think are probably the best for uh, building dashboards is using Power BI or what I call vanilla Microsoft Excel. So just ordinary Excel, like no add-ins or anything like that. And I think the real advantage there is that it's their Microsoft tools. So you have them presumably, if, you're, if you've got a 365 license, you already have Power BI to a certain extent. Of course, when you want to share them, you may need to get another license um, or to pay a little bit extra for your organization in Power BI, but it's fairly affordable. Um, and, and, you know, it's just a, just a, it's such a transferable skill. And I think probably one of the best things you can do for your career is to improve your Excel skills rather than using some other sort of proprietary software. And I'm sure there's lots of other uh, dashboard tools that you could use, but of course you have to buy licenses, you have to learn how to use them, you then have to train other staff in how to use them. So I think it's um, the best thing you can do is, is if you can to just build them in ordinary Excel or in Power BI. So these are some of the features of in modern Excel. So some of the tools, so basically modern Excel is anything from Excel 2010 onwards. Uh, so all of those tools are, are fantastic for dashboard building. So um, in terms of modern Excel, the, the tools that are going to be useful for dashboards is um, Power Pivot, which is the data warehouse. Power Query, which is the uh, grabbing data. So the question earlier about updating, um, you know, going in and grabbing new data, refreshing it and pulling it into either Excel or Power BI or Power BI, which is all about the data visualization and the dashboards. So um, when you're trying to decide what tool you're going to use for your dashboard, I mean, your choices uh, in my world anyway, are Excel, Excel or Excel. So you need to decide, are you going to use pivot tables? Are you going to use formulas? or are you going to jump in and start using Power Query and Power BI? And that's really the choices I think that you need to make. And it's really going to depend where your data is and, and how to, uh, you know, how to, uh, what's the best way of, of getting your information. So um, we have a question here from Christine. Is Power BI part of creating dashboards or is it not required? Um, yeah, uh, Power BI is an option uh, for creating um, dashboards, basically. Um, I'll, uh, I'll take you through. You can just do it in ordinary Excel and just create charts, but Power BI is great. But what, just remember when you go into Power BI, you can't really go back then into Excel. So I'll show you what I mean now. Um, I'm just going to sort of give you the context of how Excel and Power BI kind of work together. So here we've got Excel there by itself, uh, Excel that we know and love. So Excel is always going to be Excel. Everything that you could do in Excel in the past, you can still do in the future. So Excel doesn't usually take away features. Um, but if you're sitting in Excel and then you discover that you need more grunt, you need more power, you need to store data, um, you can uh, use Power Pivot um, and you can access the power of Power Pivot from within Excel and you can write DAX formulas and do everything and pull it straight in Excel and stay in Excel. Or alternatively, you can use Power Query. So if you find that that you need to analyze or, or grab data or transform data, you can do that in Power Query and stay in Excel. But alternatively, you can go to Power BI instead and you can sit in Power BI and you can grab and use the power of Power Pivot and Power Query from within Power BI. So those are kind of your choices when you're staying within the, um, the 365 environment. You can either sit in Excel and, and not do anything else, just stay in Excel and just use ordinary pivot tables. You can sit in Excel and uh, use Power Pivot or Power Query, or you can sit in Power BI and use those tools as well. 
So I'm just going to jump in. It looks like we've got a few questions. Yes, that's right. Um, it can be uh, difficult to keep up with the new versions. Um, yeah, keeping up with versions um, is uh, is quite a challenge. We've actually got a, um, a webinar uh, or a, uh, it's actually a virtual meetup tomorrow on some of the new features of Excel. I highly recommend you come along to that one um, if you are interested in the new all of the new features of Excel. So basically, um, Power BI is essentially Power Pivot, Power Query plus the visuals of the dashboard. So that kind of gives you Power BI. So what I'd like to do now is to just stop for a sec and rather than um, take you through, I've sort of given you conceptually the different types of dashboards that you can build. What I'd like to do now is jump into Excel and Power BI and just kind of give you a bit of an idea of what they would look like. So the, I'm gonna show you three different examples. So first of all, we're going to use standard tables and pivot tables just in ordinary Excel. That's the first thing we're going to do. The second thing we're going to do is you is stay in Excel, but use Power Query um, within Excel. And then the third thing we're going to do is jump into Power BI and use Power Query within Power BI. So I want to sort of show you each of those methods from a uh, technical perspective, how you would actually go about building those. So I'm going to jump into Excel now and you should be able to see my Excel. So um, Susan, let me know if, um, yes, if that's okay. showing okay. Great. Okay. So um, what I've got here is three different tabs. So you'll be sent um, uh, on the course, we send everybody a big pack of, um, of data and completed versions. So this is what data might look like. In this case, we've got a, a some data like that it's a um, it's a country club membership database and we build a dashboard on it and I'll just flick over to Excel to the completed version is one I prepared earlier we actually create we convert that into a table and then I'll just show you how we've built that we then run um, a pivot table so it's just a really simple pivot table so we just run a pivot table over that data we then use some slices so just a couple of slices and a timeline. So as you change the slicer, the pivot table changes and then the chart changes as well. Um, and so you can see here behind it, I've actually used some formulas and some pivot tables kind of in conjunction. So I've just used a really simple um, ampersand so that that actually links to um, the filter of what has been selected so that when I choose accounts, for example, you can see that changes to accounts and you could see these formulas change as well. And then that drives the donut. So that's just a really um, simple example of just staying. You can just stay in Excel, just ordinary Excel and just build a pivot tab. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing it like that. If that is the functionality that you need for your dashboard, go right ahead and do it that way. Of course, you can you can always add um, lots of images and graphics and things over the top of this. Um, I do recommend here that you get rid of the grid lines. If you go into view and um, just I've gotten rid of the grid lines, you can see how the grid lines, I think that kind of makes it look a little bit less like Excel. So um, the second thing I'm going to do is um, so we that was just using standard tables. So the second thing I'd like to show you is just, to, I just want to give you a little bit of a taste of Power Query and how you can use that within standard Excel and then build a dashboard using a, uh, a pivot table. So I'm going to jump back into Excel now, just going back to my example data. So you should be able to see my Excel. I'm going to go to the second tab here and uh, you can see all the instructions down the side here. And this information here is kind of, this is sort of in a, in a pivot layout and that's how we like to see information. But if I were to create a um, pivot chart or a pivot, sorry, a pivot table over the top of that, like that, you can see it's quite hard to do because I've got all, it's, it's just makes it very difficult to, um, to build. So instead of doing that, I'm going to get rid of that. 
and what I want to do is unpivot. So I'm going to go to um, Power Query. So to do that, I'll go to From Table Range. Okay, and that's now going to take me into Power Query. Any minute now. Aha. And now I'm in Power Query. And so I'm still in Excel, but this is the Power Query window. And I can do my analysis in Power Query. So to do that, I'm going to go unpivot other columns. So what I want to do is take all of those uh, uh, months across the top and put that into to basically unpivot it to turn it around. So I'm going to click on unpivot other columns and that's going to turn it around. I'll call that year and home close and load and that's going to take me back into Excel. So I can then run a, um, a pivot table over the top of that. Now this is really just um, a summary of the data. If I get rid of something like that and then Alt F5 or right hand and refresh, it's there because my data is still here, but uh, that's my, uh, my query, which is there. So if I hit um, pivot table now, I can then run, it just makes it a lot easier to run. I can do, um, you know, uh, a lot easier to run some analysis or, or run some pivot tables over the top of that. So that's just a simple example of how you can use um, Power Query within Excel and then run straight into dashboards. So I'll go back to that there and I'll just see if there's any any questions. Just stop for a second, see if there's any any questions. How's everybody? No news questions just yet. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, in that case, I will move on to Power BI. So um, what I'm going to do now is do something similar, uh, except I'm going to do that from within Power BI. So uh, going from, uh, we're going to move out of Excel and into Power BI now. So I'm going to move, um, first of all, I'll go to Excel and I'm going to jump to the last tab. You should be able to see my Excel now. And what you should see here is that I've got, um, and we often find um, data that looks like that. Um, you know, I often go into clients and you see kind of messy data. It's got stripes and, you know, we've got text and we've got numbers and it's all kind of mixed in together like that. And what I'm going to do is jump into Power BI now and I'm going to pull that data into Power BI and cleanse that data within Power BI. So I know where it is. It's called example data and it's on the sales tab. So I'm going to jump into Power BI now. So this is what Power BI looks like. Um, I haven't actually signed in, um, but you can use it without without even signing in. Um, my dashboard or my visuals are going to go here. My data is going to go here and my relationships are going to go here. So there's kind of three parts to Power BI. So before I start building my visuals, so before I can build the visuals, I need to get some data. So I'm going to use um, a, a Power Query basically to, to jump in and, and grab my data. So I'm gonna go in, you can get data from all over. You can get data from all over the place, from the web or all sorts of different places. But I'm gonna go into Excel and the file is called example data. It could be in a CSV or it could be on the intranet or, or anywhere really. Um, it was called sales. Um, it can be a table, it might not be. Uh, I can see straight away there's a few problems with this data. So you can see it hasn't got the, the titles, the headings at the top are not very good. So what I'm gonna do is hit transform data. I could go, if I say load, it's gonna jump straight back into Power BI. So what I wanna do is stay in Power Query. So I'm gonna hit transform data and that's gonna open it up in um, Power Query. And then I'll be able to edit and do what I need to do. I'm gonna probably do that um, power, do the, the, the unpivot again. Um, but the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of these um, column one, column two. So if I hit first row as headers, it's gonna promote Ah, and you can see here the steps down the side. So if you ever make a mistake, it's a bit like a macro. So when you record a macro, it records all the steps. So if I get rid of that, that's going to undo. So if you ever make a mistake, you just go in and do it like that. So I'll need to just redo that. Use first row as headers. There we go. Okay. 
that's cool. Um, let's have a look at the data that I've got here. Um, so if I go over, I can see there's a whole lot of, yeah, I've got, um, okay, there's a whole lot of rubbish here that I don't want. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and just highlight, yeah, I don't want those. So I'm going to just delete those. This one here is, um, that's the comments. So I'm going to just rename that. I'm going to keep that and call it comments. Okay, but I'm going to just move it across. Let me just move it because I'm going to keep that because I do want to keep those comments. I think that's going to be useful. I'm going to just drag that over. Okay, so I've got salesperson, I've got location, I've got comments, and then I've got all the years. So I'm going to do just like, like I did before. And I'm going to highlight the first three columns, hold down the shift key. And remember, I'm in Power Query, but I'm within Power BI now. So it looks very, very similar. Um, it's not exactly the same, but it's very similar. So I'm going to say other, unpivot other columns, and that's going to flick it around and give me the year. So I'm going to name that as well. So I'll call that one year and we'll call that value. Okay, maybe we'll call that sales. Perhaps that can be the sales. All right, so let's have a look at the data and see. All right, there's a bit of rubbish in there. So you can see there's a bit of text. Um, I might just um, go into, I might just go back into Power BI now and show you how to go back. So I'm in, I was in Power Query within Power BI and I'm going to push this back now into, um, into Power BI and then I can have a look at my data. I think it's probably not, um, I'm not finished with it yet, but I just want to have a look any minute now. And it takes a little while. If it doesn't, if you can't see it, sometimes you go backwards. Oh, yeah, it is there. I can see it. Okay, let's have a look at my data. And I can see I've got all these. I want to get rid of anything that is text. I just want to see the numbers. So I'm going to go into, um, I'm going to go back into my query. And I can continue to make changes in here. So there's a few ways of doing this. Um, probably the easiest way is going to be to just change the data type. So instead of being a number, I'm going to convert it. So instead of being any, which means it could be anything, I'm going to change it to whole number. So that will basically say that anything that's not a whole number is going to convert that to an error. So I'll go in there now and just get rid of um, Basically, um, if I could go in and I'll be able to just remove um, remove errors. So that will just get rid of any of the errors. Let's have a look. Yep, okay. There's a few uh, totals there. I want to get rid of those totals. Yeah, I don't want those. I can actually filter it. I know it looks like I'm filtering, but it's actually removing them entirely. So when I push this back into Power BI now, close and apply, goes back into Power BI. And all of those totals are actually going to have disappeared. So let's have a look at my, okay, I just needed a bit of a minute. Okay, all right. Okay, so I think I can actually use that now. If I go into my visuals, I've got my data. And if I go in there now and just hit sales and let's say um, location, hmm. yeah, and maybe year, Okay, maybe I can drag it across. Okay, not very exciting, but it'll do. Uh, the other thing I could do if I click away and I can go in and if I wanted to slice it, I could um, hit use a slicer and maybe slice it by salesperson. So I could pop that up there. And then I could say, I just want to look at one salesperson over the years. Um, the other thing that's quite nice is um, perhaps to go into, um, if I click back onto the chart and you can see the axes and it's, it's, it's kind of worked it out there. If you ever um, need to change that around, you would just change it there. The other thing that's quite nice is going into the comments and then just adding that to the tooltips. 
so that you can um, you can see there that actually comes up with some commentary about that person is part time. So you could put any kind of sort of commentary that you want would would go would come through from the data. And of course, once you've created, you know, you'd probably add a few more visuals here. We'll build uh, stuff like this on the course. And when you finished with it, you would then be able to share that to your workspace or you could um, download it to PDF and, and, and share the way that it is and people will be able to interact with it like that. So um, I'm just going to jump back into PowerPoint now. Um, and that is, um, so that was the three things that I wanted to show you. How's everybody going? Any questions? Yes, we do. Um, so Ajit asks, can you, can the dashboard be locked so that it is not editable? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can um, protect it, and when you share it, generally you um, share it on your workspace, and then you can lock it. And, and people, it's really for viewing. Um, if you share it in the format that it is now, then people will be able to edit it. But when you publish it, um, you want them to be able to change things, but you don't want to change the data, basically. Yeah. And um, Sunny and Aska, I've noticed you've got your hands up there. If you've got a question, let us know uh, in the Q and A. Yeah. Uh, so Troy says, can you, yeah, sorry, <laughs> can you link Graph Center reports in MS Word? Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, I, I generally find that using Word, um, it's better to just um, paste it as a, as, a, as a JPEG, like as a picture. Um, linking, yeah, you can. It, it is possible to link. Um, I must say I haven't done it a huge amount. Not when, not when we've got Power BI to play with. Okay, so I will just continue now. I'll just go through a couple of principles of dashboard design. Um, just a couple of other. Oh, this is a fun one. Um, just on, I actually saw this the other day. You know, we're talking about different, you know, choices of different charts perhaps that you might want to show or different things that you might want to show for people. Um, uh, showing it, you know, whether you show it as a, as a donut versus showing it um, visually. Um, this one came up on my uh, feed the other day. So Carlos Barbosa um, shared it and I thought it was quite fun, um, you know, just uh, seeing that the, that the, uh, his, um, the uh, horizontal is much easier to compare. So when it goes up like that, you, it's very difficult to see the amount of the chart, whereas if once it's lying down, uh, it would, um, yeah, you can um, compare each of them in a much better way. So generally donuts or pie charts are not a great way of displaying data, which brings me to my next poll. Which chart would you use if you wanted to compare four different departments? So I'm going to show you six different charts and I'd like you to tell me which of those charts you think is getting your message across better. So do you think we should use a line chart, a radar chart, a column, even with the numbers at the top? Should we show it as a bar? Should we show it as uh, with little cones? Or whether we would do it as a pie? <laughs> the prize is there, even if putting a pie in the hole with a hole in it. Uh, 3D, even worse. Or you could make it uh, explode as well. <laughs> So um, let's have a look now um, and let me know. I'm going to launch a poll and I'd like you to tell me which of those you think um, is, is the best way. <laughs> Most people said a column. Fantastic. <laughs> I definitely tend to agree. That was kind of a leading question, wasn't it? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, nobody said the line chart. Good, because the line chart really insinuates that there's some sort of a trend. So we usually show a line chart for trend. A pie is not a great way of showing it. The 3D was pretty horrible. Um, yeah, interesting. Okay, we'll do lots and lots of interactive activities like that. Um, sometimes we, you know, if you're on a dashboard, we want to show numbers sometimes. So you can use tables if you need it for reference or precision, um, if you don't need to see it visually, but you shouldn't really show numbers in a, in a live 
setting um, because uh, it uses a different part of the brain for people having to process things verbally. So I'm sure you guys are good at numbers. And so when I show numbers like that, you'd be like, yep, I get the picture. I know what you're, I know what's going on here, but it's a heck of a lot easier if I show it like that, isn't it? It's just being able to see something visually is always going to get the message across um, a heck of a lot easier. So um, it's always good to be able to use your visualization to, um, to find the story in the data and then use that visual to then tell, tell your audience what that, what that story is basically. So lastly, we'll just jump into some um, different methods of visual displays because uh, quite often we, we, we do have a lot of power. So as a person who's putting together the dashboard, um, we do have a lot of power because we can show perhaps something that isn't necessarily there. So here's a, I like this example because it kind of shows a really nice story. It comes from Andy Kirk. And uh, I thought this was a really good example because it shows a, a really nice story. So you can see, okay, the, the percentage of female CEOs in Fortune 500 companies is increasing. Um, and so that shows a really nice picture. Whereas if you show it like this, this, where you actually see the emptiness and you can see that's the 50% at the top um, and you can see uh, what a gap there is. It shows a very different story. So there's lots and lots of things that you can use or the way that you visual visualize the data can really show uh, very much a different story and uh, using some of the, the rules of perception um, can really uh, get a you know uh, draw attention much better so for example um, you know if you were to uh, just if I were to show you something like this and I were to say okay tell me how many fives are here uh, and if I were to if you were to have to actually count them it might take a, a few a few minutes whereas if I were to actually do something like that to actually uh, have the numbers jump out at you, it's going to uh, display it in a much, uh, much more easily because our, our brains are very much pattern seekers. You know, our, um, our brains are always using shortcuts. So our brains are wired to make sense of the world, basically. And you can make it really easy for other people to understand your message, or you can make it hard. So that's really up to you as the person who's building the dashboard or building the visual to really um, make sense of that. Uh, you might have seen this example before. Uh, our brains are amazing. You know, our brains can very quickly uh, make sense of something that is absolute gobbledygook. So as long as we've got the first letter and the last letter and the length of the word is right, you can basically make sense of it. I find that really interesting. Um, so just a couple of um, best practice of the red, uh, the dead re reading pattern, the way that we build, you know, just um, laying it out so that it makes it easy for people to read. And uh, the last thing I'd like to do with you is before we jump into questions, um, thinking about different screen types, of course, um, I'd like to just do run a quick poll that will tell me which dashboard is better. So thinking about the things that make it um, easy for, other, for people to follow, which of the dashboards do you think is better? The one on the left or the one on the right? So tell me what you, tell me what you think. Haha, -ha, interesting. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay, we've got Give you one, 10 seconds more. Okay, okay, all right, it's interesting. All right, I would, uh, huh, I would say, I know the one on, the, neither of those is 100% um, is perfect, but the one on the best, on the left is certainly better. It's, it's cleaner. The one on the right has got a lot of um, distracting colors and, um, you know, the, the luscious thing. It's got a big pie chart, which is quite hard to read. Um, okay, should we try that again? Let's do one more. So I'm going to tell me which of those dashboards do you think is better? The one on the left or the one on the right? <laughs> okay, you guys are getting the hang of this now. Cool. All right. 
Interesting. Ah, oh, you guys are much quicker off the mark on this one. We got just about everybody. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The one on the left is is horrid. Yes, yes. Okay. Should be able to see the results there. So um, most people liked the right, and uh, you probably know I'm a big fan of Chandu. That's one of the ones from him, and the way that it's got a couple of uh, key numbers at the top, a couple of big visuals at the bottom, and yeah, like that. The one on the left uses um, yeah 3D charts, pretty horrible. So that's it. That's pretty much what I have for you. Um, I just want to quickly go over the the course. I hope that I'd I'll see you on the eighth, the week of the eighth to the twelfth of June. We're going to cover a lot of stuff like this. I know that was really jam-packed, uh, but there is more where that came from. Uh, the course is three hours basically like that. You will get a chance to go through and actually do the practice yourself. I won't just kind of demonstrate. I'll give you the data and you'll be able to take take it through yourself. Um, Susan, if you could just jump the, um, pop the the link in the chat again that would be really helpful so people can have a look at that i'll send you an email follow up with all of this um, those are the dates um, those are the times that we're running it um, if all of the sessions are recorded uh, and we're basically running it to uh, for me i'm based in sydney so it'll be in the morning and in the afternoon so there's two two basic times to choose from and we have a special uh offer for people who uh, sign up the first. What, what are we doing, Sis? Maybe you can explain about that one. I think it was, was it the first five people to sign up that we were going to give a copy of the Dummies book? We sure are. And if you're based overseas, uh, it will be an e-book. But yes, that's the one. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're based uh, locally in Australia, we can definitely post that out to you. Um, yeah. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, was there any, uh, we have like, couple of minutes left so let me know if there's any any questions that you'd like me to cover um other than that we will we will finish off we do have quite a few questions okay. um um yes yeah, so uh christine said that she's got to excel 2016 so power bi is not included and has to be downloaded as an add-in. You always have thing? to download it. It's yeah. it's yeah, it's always downloaded. But you can um, you can create a free account even if you don't have three six five. You can just create a, a free account. Or you don't even. When I was demonstrating, I wasn't actually logged in. I was just using the software. Um, but if you want to share it, you need to have an account. Um, and it's you can get started for free. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, access why not for the lifetime that makes me laugh <laughs> yes because um we I, I might not my my lifetime your lifetime might be longer than mine <laughs> so yeah we just give you uh we we, give, we just give you recording for a year and if you want longer than that we can talk about that then but you never you never know how long uh, somebody is going to live <laughs> Now, um, we've been asked a few times, is this being recorded? And yes, yes, it is. And we are actually live streaming to YouTube at the moment uh, for this. So you can catch it on that channel. I will actually post the link to the channel in the web, in the chat as well. Uh, we're also being asked about the presentation material from this webinar. That's uh, not being included? Uh, not the not the dashboards, um, but the, the, uh, the PowerPoint. Uh, presentation I can make that available if people would like that okay, great. Uh, I was going to send out the recording so I'll include a copy of the presentation if you'd like that as well perfect and at the okay so a couple more questions here Ian's asked at the end of the presentation can you please reshow the slide which summarizes the dashboard functionality by excel version the excel uh, well Ian I'll send a copy of the slide mm -hmm. so you'll be able to go back and review all of them um, later right. on. I'll even send them in color <laughs> So you can uh, have a look at those. I just asked, um, would you recommend any books, websites for good oh, dashboard gosh. design? There's so many. Um, I, I gave a few examples from Stephen Few. So he's probably the father of modern dashboards. Another one of my favourites is um, Storytelling with Data. Um, that's not necessarily dashboard, but it's about a lot about visuals. I really love um, Cole Nussbaum and Netflix's work, Storytelling with Data. So I'll add a couple of those um, into my email when I send you that out to you this afternoon. Okay, and then yeah. another good question. So Jared said, um, oh, yeah. my, my experience is that senior managers want static presentations. The best feature of Power BI is the interactiveness. Mm. Sorry, I can't say that word. Interactiveness. 
Yeah. Uh, have you seen senior managers moving towards using interactive dashboards? Yeah, yeah, very much because we we were sort of used to just having them static and people were thought that's all they had. But now um, people quite like, they love being able to, I designed one um, at the end of last year where we were, um, we built it on the phone. And so the, uh, we built it on Power BI so that people could actually just access it on the phone and, and, and get that sort of interactive and immediate so they could look at the sales from the previous day. I don't think it was real time, it was the day before, but they could just see straight away on the phone and they just love that interactive people are getting really used to that now which is great yeah well i must okay. say that webinar was jam-packed you uh, i know and promised <laughs> yes yes i uh, i i packed as much as i possibly could into the hour and i think we are bang on the hour so i'm gonna let you guys go that was that was your lunch time uh if you're here in australia uh, we have got another session coming up for you tomorrow uh, with Oz Du Soleil. He's going to be talking about the new features of Excel, um, stepping into the future of Excel, it's called. So I'm really looking forward to that. Was there anything you'd like to add, Susan, before we sign off for today? No, I think that is it. If you have any questions about the upcoming live workshop as live online workshop, I, it's hard to differentiate what to actually call this one. It's live, um, but it's online. Live, yeah, yeah. Live three days, three hours with us. Um, I know there's a couple of questions um, that we didn't always, didn't get to, so um, we'll get back to we'll those. Back you, to those you'll take features. a, you'll, you, you'll save those, won't you, so I can get back to people. Yeah, I'm just that saving I, those I think, now. Yeah. Right. And... Um, so the last one, um, yeah, if you have any questions, get in touch. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have in regards to that. And uh, all right. All right. Thank, Thank you, everybody. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. Yes, we'll do. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye.